the steps where they say, well, we're gonna miss your eligibility requirements, sports participation, or resources, steps for achieving your eligibility. This is quick. Nope. <coughs> um, steps to achieving your eligibility. They actually start when you're a freshman or if you're in middle school. They start at that moment. They're um, what you need to be eligible. A lot of times students come in and they'll they'll come talk to me and they'll come talk to a counselor and say, well, I'm a great athlete, you know, I do this, I work on this every day, but they forget the other part of it. When you get to a college level, I know that, you know, what they don't talk to you about, and I know Corey can attest to this, is that when you get on campus, after your first couple of days to be with the team, no matter what sport you play, uh, whether it's three to five days later, you actually, each sport is given uh, a memo and a time by the coach. And it says tomorrow at 4 o'clock or 2 o'clock, you have to go to the athletic department office and you have to meet with the athletic director. I know what happens at you know, every, every university. And they don't tell you what it's about, but you go in there and you basically sign contracts. You sign contracts. You sign contracts not to take money. You sign contracts to basically, you know, what it means to, you know, you're going to be eligible, how you're going to stay eligible, that you're going to have tutors, that you won't gamble, that you won't do, that you won't, put, you won't represent the school in any way. You, you sign all kinds of contracts that, that make sure that you maintain your amateurism. And don't, that's part, that's something that's very important to understand. Um, also, what you need to be doing in high school now to make sure you can get to that point. If you don't have the GPA, if you don't have the right classes, if you don't take the correct classes, you won't be eligible. Stop me if you ever have questions. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not going to read this verbatim. Um, you need to know your grades. You need to register at the eligibility center um, at the beginning of your sophomore year. Some leeway with that. You don't have to do it. I know that I'm going to use you Leo for a lot of, you know, example. He didn't sign, he didn't register for the eligibility center when he was a sophomore and he was okay. You don't have to do that right away. It does cost to, rep, to um, register in the clearinghouse. You have to take classes that match your high school's list of NCAA courses. Every high school in, this, in the country has to have a course, uh, we have to send a list of courses that we offer. Um, and they all have to be registered in, in, with the NCAA. Those are your core courses, so foreign languages, English and sciences, histories, all of those are your core courses. They must be registered, and we do that. We take care of that. Uh, private schools use religion. You can take, um, actually, it's in that, actually on that sheet, when it talks about 16 core courses, you can take foreign languages and or religious classes. Any questions on that? Oh no, go back real quick. Oh, there's, no. a, there's a new rule that's going to start. If you fall behind, use summer school session before you graduate to catch up. I'm going to talk about that in, in a second. Okay. This is what the NCAA Registration Center uh, looks like. It's very helpful. It talks about a lot of stuff. You know, click, you create your, you create the students and parents can create a username and account. Find make sure they have everything they need. When you're a junior, you should be registering to take the SAT or ACT. Use the registration code with the four nines, nine 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 nine. Double check, you know, so double check to make sure you're taking the courses that match the list. Um, as counselors, we make sure that you're taking those classes. The students taking those classes. One of the things that we're going to cover in here is online courses. Um, in recent year, this year, these recent months. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but there's some been some like, again some student athletes who have been deemed ineligible because they've taken online courses. Um, online courses, even though they're core courses, NCAA has made guidelines that state that you have to meet certain requirements in order to have that online course count as a core course, and, and that's very important. Certain on, basically, I tell all my student athletes. Don't if you want this count. If we if we need if we need it to count for a core course, you shouldn't take it unless we can prove certain things. And I'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. Take the SAT. We you know I know we talked about that. Take college preparatory courses. Check your online you know the list. You can check that. 
Graduate on time. Each semester, use summer courses before you graduate if necessary. I think Monticello and Albemarle County is pretty fortunate because there are a lot of former student athletes that work within the school system, so we kind of try to help the students. But, you know, if there's an issue, you have to have so many courses by the time you're a junior in order to be you know, declared eligible to be recruited. Uh, if not, then you should take them in summer school because if you haven't met that requirement by the time you're a junior, and we'll get to that, the NCAA is going to deem you ineligible to be recruited. And then one of the reasons that this is called the initial eligibility set like process is because that's just the initial part to be recruited. To get into college, you still have to pass the, you know, the majority of the admissions process for general students. Um, there's a rule of thumb that I know that they follow. They will not, con like, they, if they can't do it for the general population that goes to the school, they can't do it for you. So even though they, you sign a letter of intent, you commit, you still need to pass the regular admissions process. You still have to take the SAT. You still have to fill out the application. For some universities, st you still need to get a letter of recommendation. Even though you've signed a letter of intent, or you've been recruited to go to, you still must do these things just to get through general admissions. There are a lot of student athletes who, even though they sign a letter of intent, they verbally committed. You've seen them on ESPN, you've seen them on Sports Center, you've seen them in the local news. When it comes to general admissions, they don't meet those requirements, and the general admissions office will say, We're not going to accept this student. You know, and it happens. Any questions with that, about that? Any questions? All right. My planner page, this is just, a, you know, seniors, you know, should be using this if they want, you know, if they're serious about amateurism. Review your sports participation, amateurism, responses. That's very important. That is very important. Amateurism. Um, part one of the contracts that I brought up, when you go to, if you get to the, you know, you get to that point where you, you know, you get to the, to the college level, you have to sign contracts that basically say that you're, you maintain your amateurism. You haven't taken money from you know, you haven't taken money from your family for if you hit a home run or if you score, you know, you got a hole in one or if you had so many aces at a tennis match or you hit so many three pointers. You have to answer questions like that. You have to answer questions. Have you taken sneakers from somebody? Have you taken, you know, has a, has a team given you shorts and say, hey, how you doing, Mr. Decker? Just want to tell you, you know, this is good. We're doing a good job. And they shake your hand and you have a check for $10,000 in your hand. They want to make sure that you haven't done that. So you have to answer those questions. <coughs> uh, they take it very seriously. How, uh, Does your amateur status have to be in the sport that you're going to be playing or any sport? I, I believe it has to be in any sport. I it has to be in any sport. You can't become a professional athlete. Because basically, basically what they're asking is like, um, if you've taken an agent, if you've accepted money, and say, so, you know, um, it, that, it, you must be, you must, um, you must maintain your amateurism in any sport because I can, I can tell you that there are certain football players I know last year who were quarterbacks and, um, and, and uh, or play, you know, playing collegiate football, but they were drafted to play baseball. They never took their money. Yet. So I know there was one individual. I can't remember who it was, but. After the football game, I think he had a few days, it was like one of the last football games of the season, he had to decide whether he was going to maintain his scholarship to play football or take the $500,000 signing bonus play baseball. To, to play baseball. And he had to make that decision. And it's like if you decide, if he decided to take the signing bonus, he was no longer able to play quarterback. And they were like, oh, okay. So you have to maintain amateurism in any sport. Once you take that professional leap, you are now a professional and you are deemed ineligible to play. That's why a lot of, like nowadays with baseball and football, I mean baseball and basketball, guys will enter the draft without an agent. And if they don't go in a certain round or a certain number, they don't sign so they can go back to college. Because as soon as you hire an agent, you've lost your amateurism status. An agent, they call them what, advisors. Advisors. You'll hear that word to a lot. Get around the, 
to you know we have them by order. After graduation, ask your counselor to send your final transcript. That is very important. We send the final transcript. We just need to know where is it going. We need to know where is it going. It has to be sent. They have to one make sure that you graduated high school. That is the most important thing. In order to be eligible, all the things that I'm going to tell you, you must be one of the, one of the main things to be eligible to play a sport at any level, whether it's Division One, Two, II, or Three. You must have a high school diploma unless you graduate from New York. In the state of New York, that's the only place where they will allow you to play if you attain the GED. You must have a high school diploma. That is probably one of all the things that I'm saying, that's the most important thing I'm saying. You must have a high school diploma. In my, my, my 11 years working with students, you know how many people I've met. I, I got my GED. That's great. I'm sorry. You can't play. You have to go back and get your high school diploma. So, all right. <coughs> mm -hmm. Oh, help me go to that. I think you did. Yeah, okay, I'm good. All right. Academic initial eligibility requirement. This is what we were talking about. Here we go. So, at course, all a course that qualifies for high school graduation: English, math, natural or physical science, social science, foreign language, or comparative religion or philosophy. Most schools or private schools offer foreign, uh, the, the comparative religion or philosophy. That's why that, that has changed. When I first started this, it was 14 core courses. Now it is 16. We're going to get that. Um, it is considered four-year college preparatory. It is taught at the, uh, or above the high school's regular or academic level. Meaning, meaning. Algebra 1 is above, or high school is above the academic level. If I come to Ms. Decker, or I come to you, and I say, we're going to put your son in Algebra 1. But then I come to Ms. Decker and I say, we're going to put your son, we're going to make a course up called Algebra Functions, Basket Weaving, just because he, we know he can pass it. But the word Algebra is in it. We won't write that off. That's not it. It has to be at or above. Um, that's why. We, and we have to register the courses. Like I said, we have to take, so I can't register the course. I can't say, well, yeah, he's great. He took basket weaving and something about algebra. Now that counts, doesn't it? NCAA is going to say no. All right, for mathematics courses, is at the level of algebra one or higher. Is taught by a qualified instructor as defined by appropriate academic authority. That is the, that last part right there is probably the most important. Remember I said online courses don't work. That's, that's, that's it right there. If I ask your son or daughter to take an online course, I need to make sure that it's, it's taught by a qualified instructor. NCAA requires that I have to have, that a student has to have interaction with a teacher so many hours. If they can't, if we can't prove that, they won't count the course. So that's why when we offer an online course, it's where, how often are you meeting with the teacher online? You, and you also have to have a face-to-face -face contact, I believe. I'm going to check that one here. I can't remember. I read it earlier. Any, any questions about that? That's probably the most important thing. If somebody fails something, I will not. I may, and we all know that at this school, so we're good. If someone fails a course, we don't want them in Apex. Even though Apex is a great course for online courses, it is. But Apex will not count. It won't. We can't, it just won't, NCAA won't count. Courses taught through internet, this is what we're talking about. Distance learning, independent study, these are non-traditional courses. All right, in, independent studies, individualized instruction. Like we have a lot of students who are in independent study. The good thing about your core courses is that most of the, by the time we get to independent studies, we've already achieved the core course requirement, so we don't, you know, need to. The good thing, like I said, we, I go back to the quality. I, I am very happy to be a part of the Albemarle County school system because they're one of the systems that won't let you do it. There are some school systems in the country that will be like, okay, we don't, you didn't pass algebra, that's okay. We're going to put you in an independent study and give you an A for algebra to try to, you know, and, and it happens. So, you know, it's really good. Albemarle County is really good about it. Correspondence courses, computer software programs, these things, they're, they're trouble. 
All right, so this is, this is, these are the requirements. It must include ongoing access between the instructor and student. I can't guarantee that that's going to happen in a, a, a distance learning course. Must be defined, have a defined time period of completion. It, you know, should be clearly identified as a non-traditional course. It has to be identified. So again, that's why we, you know, we don't, we don't use them. It must be a four-year college preparatory. It needs to be comparable in length, content, and rigorous courses taught in traditional classroom settings. I can't guarantee that stuff as a counselor. I can't. So I'm not going to tell somebody to take it online. If you fail it, I'm going to first of all I'm going to ask you, do you, you know, do you really understand what it means? First I'm going to come to the student and say, do you really understand what it means to be a student athlete? I'll just use us for example. I know that going into college when it came time to take my SATs, I wasn't worried. I had a great GPA. I was in all my courses, I never failed a course. I was a great student athlete. I know to get into UVA, a lot of people think if you're an athlete, you can just get into UVA. News for you. You have to pass pretty much the same rigor as the, in their admissions office. Duke, that's what Coach K, I can tell you, Coach K, when he goes to your house, you know, he's talking about what it takes to get into Duke, and hopefully you can get in. You know, by the time he's talking to you, he's already knowing whether you can get in or not. If you can't get in, he's not going to talk to you. I don't care if you're your top rated player in the country or not. You're not going to, if he, if he knows that you barely are getting by in high school, he's not going to come talk to you. You know, so as a student athlete, you must be a student first. You have to be a student first. There are plenty of people, for everyone who gets recruited, for everyone who signs a letter of intent, there are hundreds who are probably better. They just don't have the grades. They don't come, so they have some issue with the academic side of school. And, they're, and, and unfortunately, they don't pick it up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Course, core course time limitation. This is the part that I know. This is this is this is a new rule that's coming into play. From the time you enter ninth grade, you have four years or eight semesters to complete your core course requirements. If you fail to complete high school on time in eight semesters, core courses taken after the eighth semester will not count. Eight semesters or four years. You can't do it, cannot go. Those courses after that fourth year will not count. Even though they are core courses, they will not count. On time also means that if your high school graduation takes place between June 1st, and you, you must graduate on June 1st. If you don't graduate with the rest of your class, you have not completed the requirements on time. You will be deemed ineligible. Those courses will not count. So that means Let's say you're on your grad, you're, you, you're, you're doing great. You failed at English, second semester. Can't graduate on June 1st. Well, that means that, that English in the summer is not going to count when you make it up and you graduate in all. <laughs> Division two, you are permitted to use all core courses completed from your ninth grade year until the time you graduate. That's the difference. Division one. 16 core courses right now, Division II, I believe it's 14. Division three, they don't meet these requirements because they don't offer scholarships. They offer grants and financial aid packages and awards, which I'll get to in a second. But you can complete them early. You can complete them early. It doesn't happen often? But it no, it doesn't happen often, but you can complete it early. It actually happens more often in states like Texas and Florida for football. Students will play, they'll graduate early, enter a college, you know, somewhere in January. Uh, they'll finish their they'll finish early and go to school so that they can, you know, start their, their, their college career early. So actually Alabama, Florida, and Texas. And I know um, there's there's a few cases in baseball where a student will finish early in the fall semester, graduate in January, and be eligible to play that next semester in college if they go to the college at that point. What are the initial eligibility requirements? Initial, this is just for you to get in. Graduate from high school, complete an NCAA approved courses, earn a minimum required core grade point average, and earn a required SAT score. It's a sliding scale, I actually put it on those packets. 
The higher your GPA is, the lower your SAT scores can be. It's a sliding scale. The higher your GPA is, the lower your SAT scores can be. Mm -hmm. For Division One SAT minimum, with a critical read in middle with a combined score of 900 or a minimum sum score of 75 on ACT and then the 3.0 or higher in your core courses. So take out all of independent studies, take out all the internships. And if you notice, you'll see three English, two math, two sciences, two courses in English, and then five additional courses in any of those areas. Um, how many of you young guys remember when I came to your when you were in middle school and I said if you wanted to be if you wanted to have the potential to play at the collegiate level, you need to just go for your advanced diploma automatically. Alright? I said that I say that every year. Going for an advanced diploma sets you up to meet these requirements. If you go for a standard diploma, you will not achieve these requirements. It's just flat. An advanced diploma require you, and that's going to help you. It's just point blank. You will not meet those requirements if you go for a standard diploma. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing else I can say about it. That you have to do it. For Division two, notice that GPA. 12 core courses. It says 14 core courses right now and 12 core courses right now. That is changing. Right now it is. I think it's on the front of that. It talks about it in a couple of years. Anybody who's going to graduate after August 2015, these requirements are changing. These requirements are changing. Mm -hmm. Division one, right now, as of right now, 16 core courses, three years of math, algebra or higher, two years. Of a, of a lab, earth science, biology, one year of an additional English, math, or so. If you you already you can already do the math. You need to be going above algebra two, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. At least one year of an additional English, additional English, math, or natural science. You need to be getting past that. So that's why when I'm pushing kids to go to the honors level, AP, this is why. Two years of a social science, you're going to have. You need it, you know. So you get World History One, World History Two. With the standard diploma, you're only getting World History One, U.S. Virginia History and Government. Four years of additional core courses from any area above or foreign languages and comparative religious philosophy. That's why I say you need an advanced diploma because all these requirements are listed in an advanced diploma. This is the sliding scale where I said the higher your GPA is, the lower your SAT score is going to be. So if you have a 2.0, which is the minimum to be initial eligibility requirement, you must score 10 10. But if you have a 3.5 or higher in your core courses, pretty much if you get your name right, you're going to sign a letter of intent. You get 200 points for just getting your name right. I'm not saying to go in there and get 200 points. I'm just saying they reward you for doing well in school. I was nervous. I know I don't know about, I don't test well. I was very nervous about taking the SAT. My high school coach told me, your GPA is high enough. This is how he got me to relax. To relax, to relax. He said, go in there and get your name right. You'll be okay. I said, okay. I was, you know, I felt better about myself. And you got it right. I got my name right. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. Um, all right, so there are new requirements. August 1st, if you graduate on or after 2016, they actually changed it because I know it used to be, they, they must have changed it because I know last year when I was reading about it, they were saying, 2015, here, this is what it is. So they actually, they, they're helping people out right now. So you need to be a full qualifier, all right? Academic, like you can either, it's like there are three possible academic, you can be a full qualifier, that means you're, you're academically eligible. You can be an academic red shirt, or you can be a non-qualifier. They're bringing back the academic red shirt. It used to be called Proposition 48. You hear a lot of times in the 90s, so-and-so is going to school, but they're gonna be a Prop 48. That's, they're bringing that back, basically. So they after the aid the first year, practice in the regular academic year terms, second semester and quarter, you have to basically prove you belong in college. All right, so right now, minimum core GPA is a 2.0. A minimum is a 2.0. After 2016, it's going to be, 20, it's going to be a 2.3. 
the sliding scales, and you must complete 10 courses by before the beginning of your senior year. That means out of all the 16 that you must have, 10 of them have to be completed before by the time you're a junior. I mean, by, by the time you're a senior. 10 of them have to be completed. So you have two English is 9, 10, or 11, that's three. Algebra 1, 2, geometry, that's six. You know, you should have at least world history, U, uh, world, world history 2, U.S. Virginia, that's nine. So if you're on, again, if you're on that, act, that, that advanced diploma track, you're doing well. Uh -huh. This is the full division one I just, I just talked about. It. This is what you must achieve to be a division one qualifier. Um, we're going to go to division two next um, after this one. If you have, you know, this is where they're saying examples of if you're a 2.5 core GPA, it requires a thousand SAT. All right. Must complete 10 courses. Of the 10 courses, seven must be in the areas of English, math, or science. All right. For Division Three, these qualify. You don't see Division Three up here because, basically, like I said, they don't offer full scholarship. They offer financial aid packages and grants. Basically, if you want to qualify for those grants, go for an advanced diploma. Your core GPA, if it's a 3.5 or higher, they can work with you. They can work with you. Um, mm -hmm. Sliding scale for competition again. Academic register, you haven't met the requirements. You met the requirements to be eligible, but they're just not quite there. You have a 2.0 in the 16 core courses. That means you're not quite there. They're going to redshirt you. You basically have a semester or a year to prove you belong in school. And um, as uh, for my history, I know, I remember, I had a great friend of mine who was in college, my freshman, I was a junior, he was a freshman, came back after the summer, said, hey, where's Big Mike? Kick him to the curb. Coaches never mentioned him again. Like he never even existed. It's a business. It's a business to them, you need to treat it for it as a business for you. Sliding scale in the red shirts. Yeah. Any questions about that so far? All right. What if a student does not meet? If you don't meet these standards, um, you're not going. There's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can say. Uh, it happens. I'm sorry. I think that as much as we talk about it, there should be no reason. If you really want to do it, it's hard work. It's a lot of work, but it can be done. You know, it's one of the greatest times in my life. Great experience, no matter what level you go to. If you work hard, you can do it. Good. Mm -hmm. Division two, the 16 core courses, they're going to move from 14 to 16. They're going to do the same thing. All right. Good. Test score requirements, earn a 2.0 or better in your core courses, earn a combined SAT score or uh, the ACT. Take the SAT and the ACT. They combine them just like I talk about when you're regular missions, they super score, they take the best. Mission can match, they take the best score. Division three. Unlike division one, there are no uniform set eligibility requirements to division three schools um, because they offer financial aid um, in your, in, in, in they, based on your GPA. It's based on your GPA. The higher your GPA is, the, more, the better the financial aid package division three can offer you. And Marine Henry, Bridgewater, Eastern Mennonite, um, Lynchburg, higher your GPA is. Whenever those schools call about a student, they say, what's they, they say, I saw so and so play. What's your GPA? When I can tell them, I have a four or five. Really? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Let's talk. That's great. So when I have to say it's lower, man, two, one. They can't work with that because they, they have to go to their board and say we have this student, this is their GPA. What can we do? We can give them a full, we, can, we can't give them a full scholarship, but we can give them a full financial aid package. Basically help them go to college for free. 
sports, I talked about amateurism. You must maintain that. If there's one thing I can say, don't take any money from anybody. Don't let people ride the train with you. I, I, I mean, I see it a lot. You know, people you never heard from before, you like, you know, um, take this. I mean, you know, you, you'd be surprised. Maintain the amateurism. Get an education. You know, I, if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. That's, that's the best way I can put it. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Update your sports participation, amateurs, unless the, you know, basically what this is, students, you know, <coughs> so you read that, fill it out. All right, may practice and compete and receive athletic aid. It doesn't stop there, though. It doesn't stop there. I'm just going to briefly go over this. Once you get to that, that's why it's the initial eligibility part. Getting in is just part of it. Staying is the key. Your scholarship, your financial aid package, it's not guaranteed. You, everybody, I received a full ride. Lil Johnny received a full ride. Stacy got a full ride. Full ride is not a full ride. It is renewable every year. If you could only have seen my face, and I'm pretty sure your face, the day I signed my letter of intent, and I whispered over to my coach, and hey, this just says for the 1995-96 school year, I'm not signing, this is a typo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to get a full ride. And he looked at me, it is a full ride. They renew it every year. You have to maintain, you can't, you know, you have to, they renew it every year. They assess whether they want to keep they will mail home your contract every summer, basically. Every time you, you'll get a letter and they'll say, here's what your contract is this year, take it or leave it. It's, it's renewed every single year. There's no, like he said, when we go into those compliance meetings, we're talking about amateurism and all that stuff, we make sure that everything is done and set before we even set foot on the field. Um, so all of those things are taken care of every single year. And he touched on it, you know, we do those compliance meetings to make sure we haven't, you know, bet or gambled or lost any amateurs of status. But that's every year. We don't, you don't just do it once and hope that you don't do it. They, they do it every single year. So when you get the, the, the scholarship, the contract, everything, it's, it's renewable. They can take it away or they can give you more. Um, and it depends on sport. Obviously, there's, there's differences in sports as well. One thing I want to touch on is that if you are fortunate enough to sign a letter of intent, that letter of intent doesn't mean that you don't also qualify for financial aid. You qualify for, some people will, I qualify for, that for financial assistance, even though I received a full athletic scholarship. Athletic scholarship means that they pay for your books, room and board, meals, and that was it. That's it. Everything was free, except for me to survive. So you, you still need to fill out the financial aid, the free application for federal student aid, you still need to fill it out when you get to that point. Um, there's a Pell Grant that everyone qualifies for. Even if you receive a scholarship, you still qualify for that. For certain divisions, Division One and Two, there's also what's called a clothing grant, where you get a certain amount of money each year where you're, you're, you, you, you can qualify for. So it's very important, even though you, get, you may have that opportunity to get a scholarship, you still need to fill out the free application for federal student aid. You always must fill, you should always fill that out. These are the resources. This, this, this slideshow, I use this one just because it went over everything. It's on the NCAA Eligibility Center website. Um, I, we, I just wanted to use it so you could get us, you know, see it. You know, um, what grade are you? Twelve. Okay. So, you know, you, you should, you know, this stuff, you, you, have you done most of this stuff? Yeah. Okay, you need to go on. Um, you know. Need to make sure I have all this stuff. If you have questions, come see me. Come talk to me about it. You know, come talk to the counselors. We all have it. You know. Um, any questions? Any questions? I've covered it. You know, I don't want you to walk out here and miss it on the car. Boy, you're good. <laughs> so, so the students that fall short. They go to like NAIA or JUCO? Um, yeah, and anybody who falls short, like if you fall short, that's one thing that's not covered in here. They, they just don't talk about it. You can go to the NAIA or a junior college. 
Um, a junior college, like if you don't graduate on time, you can go to a junior college. Junior college pretty much is a community college with a sports program. You can go to those programs. Now, you, you have two years to get an associate's degree and get recruited and possibly go. But if it's still, they want to see what you're doing in those two years. You can also go to post-grad, Fork Union, Fishburne, Hargrave Military Academy. But you need to be careful to understand the NCAA, what the NCAA requirements mean. If you go to those places, you give up a year of your athletic eligibility at the Division One, Division Two level. You give up your, you give up one year. So if you go to Fork Union, you get three years to play at the college level. If you transfer to a private school, I know a lot of times you hear about people going back to a private school, they repeat a year, or what do they call it, reclassify. NCAA has changed rules on that. If you go back and reclassify, you're giving up one of your years of eligibility to, um, at an NCAA level. It means if you go back and reclassify, you you know, and you spend an extra year in high school in private school, you're gonna be you get you get three years to play somewhere. Is that post grad is that a new rule? Yeah, no, 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 no. Post grad has always been that way. It's always treated post. as taking away. Uh, and you're, I had a friend who went to Fort Union. He went in my year. We, we, he went in the year before me. He, only, he, he went in as a he, he went in as a sophomore. So when he came in to App State, he was already a sophomore, even though he was on. He spent one year at uh, Fort Union. They counted that one year at Fort Union as his freshman year of um, playing college sports. That's very important to know. How about if someone does a gap year that doesn't go to school? Do you, you still lose a, a year like no. post grad? If you play, it's when you play. Okay. When you play, if you go, you know, if you don't play, that's different. You know, it's when you play. Any other questions? Not a question, but I can attest to the uh, eligibility that, that uh, he was talking about. <clears throat> One with uh, UVA. Uh, my son was ranked number two in the 400 in the state, and when he spoke with Coach Baumgartner, he was kind of sitting back in his chair when he showed him his 4.3 GPA. His body language changed completely. <laughs> so he, uh, my, my son graduated from UVA in, uh, in 07. When they call you or send you, when they call you, when they send letters, they don't know. You. Yeah. When they call you and talk to you, they already know you can play the sport. Yeah. They're not calling you to see if you can play the sport. They're calling you to see if you're going to be a legitimate. Prospect to come to their school. I got you know real quick. This you know when you go to a college coach's office, they have stuff on the board like that, and they're nothing but names ranked, and they're not ranked. They're ranked to see where you fall. If you're number one, that's what they want. They want you real bad. Then you can move from number one to fifty real quick if they find out you're number one, but you have a two point two, and number five has a three point eight. You, you know they they look at that really quick. It's a business to them. They can lose their job for recruiting the wrong person. And some of them are getting paid multi-million dollars to recruit you, get you to make their program look great. So you best believe, you know, it's a business to them. You need to treat it as a business for you. So I think I'm finished. I know I'm finished because it's 842. So you're going to, you know, thank you.